Hi, this is a short video to talk about a new feature I've added. Um, it's a uh, free uh, repository on my GitHub uh, that allows you to create uh, shader global variables for timeline and other playables. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, uh, if you're not familiar with how shaders work internally, uh, there is a, a table of global variables for shaders. And in Microsplat 1.6, which is now live on the Asset Store, uh, a lot of the variables have an option to be um, global now. And so the way this works is that if you want uh, some external system to control these variables across your scene, um, it doesn't matter if you have, you know, 10 terrains or one terrain, if you make a variable global, that means that they all get the same uh, value, no matter how many, uh, you know, things are using it. Um, and what will happen is, is that you'll see this little G here. So if I turn this off, then the, the variable is local. And that means that um, it works like you would expect. If I change the amount of snow, you can see it comes in and out of the scene. If, however, I set it to global, then the variable will read its data from the global shader table. And this is something that all shaders can do. Um, so that's pretty cool. That lets us integrate with things like Enviro, uh, very easily. I sent over a list of these variables to the guy who writes Envi Enviro and he's going to add them into his next patch and hey, we're integrated. So that's great. Um, but there's still uh, something further we can do with this, which is allow us to control these variables via timeline. Um, and so here I have a little timeline set up. I can scrub it and I'm changing the snow level and snow height um, in max. And so when I originally thought about doing this, I looked at the API and I said, okay, I can build uh, little controller objects to control those variables. Uh, but that seemed a little restrictive to me in that you have to keep building these things every time you add a new variable. And it means it only really benefits Microsplat. So instead what I did was I created a uh, new system called the uh, player, Playable Shader Globals. Uh, maybe I should change the name of it to something that's easier to say. Uh, but it is up on my GitHub. It is free, and um, it's very, very simple. So what it is, is it's got a couple scripts in here and an editor script. There's barely any runtime code, which is great. And um, I've created a couple variables for Microsplat here. And the way this works is you can just create new ones. So if I create a scriptable object for the playable shader global here, uh, then essentially what I have is I have a, a value type, which can be uh, float vector 2, 3, or 4. It can be a min-max slider, which is basically a vector 2 that has a range. Um, and that's just really the same thing as a vector 2. It's just got a different UI, a color, or an int value. So I can maybe select a color here, and then I can set a parameter name here. And this is the actual uh, shader parameter name. So maybe I have something... Um, I have like G for global, and I have like tint color that I want everything to get, right? I give it a display name, and I'm just going to call it global tint. And it has a range value. Uh, I'll probably write a custom editor uh, for this so that it hides it on other types, but right now it's just always there. If you're using a float um, then you or the min-max slider, you want to set a range value so you can like, get a slider. Um, Okay, so now I have a, one of these declared. Uh, how do I actually use it? And let's give this thing a better name here. Let's call it um, my global tint. Okay. Uh, then what I can do is go over to timeline, and now I can add a playable shader global track right here. And then I can add to that this uh, global clip. So that will add this clip here. And the clip doesn't know what property we're setting. For that, we use the scriptable object. So we go over here and we select this, and we select a global tint. And now we have a tint color. And so we can uh, set that tint color. We can uh, animate that tint color. So um, we can duplicate this and blend it to blue here. Maybe light blue. And now we have our animation track uh, of these global values that is um, 
blending. So to use this in a shader, if you're not familiar with shaders, you'll probably have to write your shader, ask your shader writers to allow their stuff to be globally controlled. Or if you're using Microsplat, you can obviously uh, toggle those options and it will recompile the shader. Um, but let me go over to my little test shader here and we will set that up to, um, to respond to this value so you can see how it's done. Um, so here we have our global tint. I'm just gonna copy that variable name. And then I'm gonna go have a little test shader in here somewhere. Here we go, test global. And uh, what you do is instead of adding a property for your shader like you would for most shaders, you leave that out. And then you can just say, okay, I have a fixed for called G tint color. You can already see I have a global test color in there. Um, and then I can make that my pixel color. So my color is equal to the global tint color and return color. And let's put that on a cube. Uh, three object cube. Wish Unity would place things in reasonable positions when you uh, add objects. They tend to just be in anywhere. All right, so here's my cube. I have my test material here. It's currently set to red. Um, because we're at the beginning of that timeline. And let's go back to our terrain where I made my timeline and scrub this. And you can see now that that global tint color is tinting to blue, right, over that animation. And it'll go back to its default color when the animation is done. Um, so uh, you can use this to basically make any shader global anywhere uh, into something that you can use in the playable API. It doesn't have to just be for Microsplat. And additionally, uh, from C Sharp, uh, you can actually set and get uh, global variables. So if you wanted to route things through this, uh, you could use it as sort of your global table for sort of world changing things to do with weather systems and things like that. I wouldn't recommend putting like thousands of variables into this table if you're not using them for shaders. Uh, but since most of this stuff ends up being animated or used in a shader, uh, it's a pretty good way to store things about like weather and sort of scene globals and lighting uh, colors and things like that. Um, so yeah, uh, that is free on my GitHub. And uh, I will probably ship a collection of these objects for Microsplat in the next patch, uh, but it's easy enough to make them. Uh, the system for actually uh, turning on and off globals in Microsplat is wherever you see this little G. So like for instance, here's the puddle uh, maximum height and the raindrop intensity. Uh, so any of these you can make global and then you can animate them as part of your timeline anim animations uh, for cutscenes and things like that. And uh, yeah, and it's very easy to add these for any other system you have that has global variables um, or your own shaders. So uh, yeah, that's about it. And um, hope you like it.